Welcome to my channel. My name's Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on most Wednesdays and Fridays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today we're going to talk about the 356, the Beetle, and the Model T. Okay, so if you saw the last video on the 356, you would have seen uh, that I got the headliner in it. It came out pretty good. Um, overall, I'm really pleased with it. It came out a little bit better than the Beetle. You may remember that I did the headliner and the Beetle a while back. This one um, has a few more wrinkles in it. It's still not bad. I'm, I'm really overall, I'm kind of pleased with this one as well. It's much better than it was uh, when I got the car. Um, but, you know, you get better with practice. And so this one came out a little bit better. I, um, I learned a few things um, between the Beetle and this one. One, I got a lot more clips. I bought two more boxes of these clips and I used almost all of them. Um, and then also the adhesive that I used. Uh, on the Beetle I used the spray adhesive and I started using it on this one as well. Um, but it makes such a mess. Uh, it just gets all over everything. And also, it's hard to get it exactly where you need it. So, um, this time, I used some rubber cement that I brushed on. So. This can of rubber cement actually came with the carpet kit for the Beetle, but I didn't use it for the carpet. For the carpet, the spray adhesive actually worked really well. Um, but for this application, this rubber cement with a brush worked really well. I was able to get it right in the areas that I needed it and the right amount. Um, that mixed with the additional clips uh, made this one come out much better. So anyway, I'm pleased with that, I'm making good progress. Um, the next step, on the 356 is going to be to put in the windshield and the rear glass. Um, hopefully it's going to go smooth. I have kind of test fit both of them uh, and I'm pretty sure they're going to fit. Uh, the back, I'm pretty positive that one's going to be fine. The front, I think, is probably going to be okay. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I do have a little bit of a history of breaking windshields, so hopefully I can get it done in one go. Um, but either way, it'll work out in the end. So that's the 356, uh, the Beetle. So for those of you that are new to the channel, this is a, a 69 Beetle. I've been working on this for quite a while. It's almost completely done. I'm very, very close to finishing it. Uh, I have a few little things to work out. Um, the main thing right now is the front end. So there's a rubbing sound when you make a left-hand turn, kind of like a grinding sound. And I already replaced the front wheel bearings, hoping that was going to fix it, because I assumed that the wheel was moving a little bit, like tilting a little, um, and hitting the brakes and making that sound. But that didn't fix it, and I couldn't see any damage to the brakes. Uh, however, in the process, I did see that the upper ball joints on both sides were in really bad shape. So, um, that's what I'm going to work on now. So I've got to pull the upper control arm off that holds the ball joint and take it in to have it replaced. I bought new ball joints, uh, but I looked into it and it's almost impossible to replace them yourself. It's very difficult to get them out and very difficult to get them back in. They're pressed in. Um, so the local um, parts shop uh, to me, they can do it. They can press it in, but it takes a few days. So um, I've been waiting to have a spot to park this in for a few days so I could take it apart. So uh, anyway, that's what's going on with the Beetle. You'll see that the um, the Land Cruiser frame is no longer in this area, so I moved that out. I won't need that again until I put the body back on it. So I can work on the Beetle here for a few days, then I can drive this out, I can bring the body back in for the Land Cruiser, and then I can work on that in this space. So um, that's what's going on with the Beetle and the Land Cruiser and the 356. So now we will talk about the Model T. Okay, so if you saw my last video on the Model T, uh, you would have seen that I'm continuing to uh, assemble the engine. I got the head back on. Um, first of all, I had to fix the issue from the first video, which was that there was an oil tube in the engine that I forgot to install, and to do that I had to take the transmission back off. So I pulled the engine back off of the oil pan, pulled the transmission off, put the oil tube in, um, and then put it all back together and then kept going from there. Hey, look who it is, Walter. What's up, buddy? 
What's up, Walter? So good to see you. So rare to see you these days. Thanks for coming out, buddy. Uh, but so, yeah, so then I just kept uh, moving forward. I got the hog's head back on. Um, I did, uh, I mentioned in my last update video um, that another thing I was going to check when I had the, um, the transmission off was the clearance between the flywheel and the new magneto. And so I did check that. I didn't include it in the video. Um, and it, it's not perfect. Most of the clearances were within spec. There were a few uh, magnets that were not. There were a few that were kind of close and one or two that were kind of farther away. Um, but it didn't appear that changing the shims around on the magneto was going to affect the clearance for those magnets. Um, I think most likely a few of those magnets just aren't as flush on the flywheel as they should be. Um, so that seemed like a much more in-depth um, fix, right? I mean, I think to fix it, you'd have to start taking all those magnets off, maybe reshimming them on the flywheel. I'm not really sure, but it seemed like it's probably going to be a very uh, in-depth and kind of long process. And really, like I mentioned before, the magneto is not necessary. Uh, in fact, it'll probably always run better off the battery than the magneto, even if everything's set perfectly on the magneto. I believe it would still run better off the battery. Um, I replaced the magneto and I'm glad that I did even if it doesn't end up working because like I said the old magneto the covering uh, on the coils was flaking off in big chunks so there would have been big chunks of this kind of plastic epoxy type material flying around inside of the engine um, if I had used the old magneto or I would have had to recoat them in some way so, so I'm glad I replaced it and maybe it will work but it's really kind of a novelty thing to get it to run off the magneto like I said it's probably going to run better off the battery uh, so anyway um, I did do that while it was apart, um, and since then, um, I've got it basically ready to go back in the car. Um, the carburetor's not on. I'll put that on after it's in the car. I still have to rebuild the carb. Um, but basically, this is pretty much ready to go back in the car. And then once it's in, then I can install the fan and stuff like that. But I don't want to have that in the way um, when I've got the engine on the hoist and swinging around and stuff. So... Um, this is ready to go in the car. So the next video will be, um, the plan is, will be for me to clean up this, um, front end and then put the engine in the car. So I'm going to remove this, clean it, paint it, put it back on, put the engine in the car, um, and then get the radiator on and hopefully pretty much have it all back together with the engine in the car in the next video. That's the goal. Um, and then I expect the video after that will probably be the first start. That's when I will uh, rebuild the carburetor and do other little things that need to be done uh, to get it to run. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do as far as having the rear end connected to the engine. I'm, I'm concerned because the way this transmission is, if the pedals aren't set correctly, it kind of always wants to, to move. The car always wants to move. So you have to adjust the pedals to kind of get it into neutral. Um, so when I start it, I think I either want to have the rear end disconnected um, or at least have the car jacked up so that if the wheels do start to, to spin, it's not just immediately running itself into the wall or running me over or something. So um, I've still got to put some thought into how it will actually go when I do try to start it. I do plan on removing the rear end um, and going through that before I ever drive the car. So it may be that when I put the engine in, I just don't connect um, the drive line. But I think the only way to do that would be to actually move the rear end back some. So anyway, I've got to kind of figure that out um, before I can start it. But we're getting really close. I mean, the engine looks great. It's going to look awesome back in the car. I just love the way that it's going to look. Um, the inside of the engine bay is going to be all new inside and then outside of course the car is all old and rusty So I'm really happy with that and once this gets cleaned up and is painted black, it's gonna look really good um, So we're making really good progress on this one and um, Yeah, there'll be another video out soon with the engine going back in the car. So That's it for the Model T That's it for the 356 and the Beetle. So that's all for this week guys. Thanks for watching and If you haven't already, please consider subscribing